Welcome to the second session of teleconference. In our previous session, we presented a family in which there was an under 5 problem and we also discussed the need for family presentations and how to make a family presentation, all those details are discussed. In this session, we will discuss a family having a antenatal case and some other problems which will be uh, discussed in detail. To discuss the uh, family, we have uh, the same experts as previous session. To my right, Professor Sanjeev Gupta. To his right, Professor S.K. Pradhan. And to his right, Professor Jugal Kishar. We have uh, the student representative, Dr. Uh, Dr. Suniti Maji, uh, who will be making the case presentation in this session. And uh, the experts will moderate the case, just like in the previous session. I want to uh, inform the students again that the practical forms need not be filled up immediately. You have to fill up the practical form after you complete the SDC activity because you require a completion certificate for practical forms. So after you complete all the activities, you fill up the practical form and the last date for the practical form is November 7th as mentioned in your program guide. So from the program guide, you can Xerox the form and you can submit the new form is not required for practical uh, term and examination. And the practical form has to be submitted to program in charge only. Please submit 50 rupees per course uh, in practical also and submit to the program in charge. Uh, now coming to the uh, session proper, I will request now Dr. Suniti Maji uh, to make the presentation and I will request the experts to moderate. Dr. Suniti, please. Good morning to all the panel of doctors and colleagues. Morning. I'm presenting a Muslim nuclear family of Mr. Muhammad Munim, resident of Kotla in Pilanji in New Delhi and consisting of a total number of three members of which two are adults, the husband Mr. Muhammad Munim and wife Mrs. Salma and a toddler, their only child, one and a half years old. This family belongs to upper lower class of socio-economic status according to the modified Kuppu Swami's scale as the head of the family is a car mechanic with a monthly income of rupees 7000 and literate up to class 12. Now the case proper. Mr. Mohammed Munim's wife, Mrs. Salma, aged 22 years, was taken as the index case and the family under study. She is literate up to class 5 and is staying as a housewife in the family. Her chief complaints were amenorrhea for 8 months and generalized weakness for the last, last one month. Now in history of presenting complaints, she is married for 3 years and this is her second pregnancy with para 1, living 1 and no abortions. Her LMP was 15 January 2007 and therefore ETD is 22nd October 2007. Since the family is health, health conscious, she is taking regular antenatal checkups at a nearby hospital called Palika Hospital. During the first trimester, she had complaints of nausea with excessive vomiting and loss of appetite. Otherwise, there were no, com no other complaints like bleeding PV or pain abdomen or burning situation. Routine investigations of pregnancy were advised with treatment for nausea and vomiting and then advised to come for next ANC after one month. During second trimester, her complaints of nausea and vomiting still persisted but with reduced intensity. Otherwise, she had no other complaints like headache, pedal edema, bleeding PV, pain, abdomen, chest pain, dyspnea or fever. Fetal quickening started at 24 weeks. On investigation, ultrasonography was done for assessment of fetal well-being and for any congenital anomaly. Medicinal treatment with plenty of glucose drinks were advised for nausea and vomiting. I just want to interrupt here. You know, why the ultrasound was done? Yeah, for assessment of fetal well-being and for uh, any congenital anomalies. Okay. Okay, they were suspecting some congenital anomalies? No, because routinely it is done, during the second trimester routinely it is done so that whether, means doctors are advising the patients so that uh, there should not be any complication um, during the later part of the pregnancy uh, just to so that is there any IUGR developing IUGR or any other complication for that ultrasonography is done. Thank you. 
Okay. Routinely it is done. Okay. Uh, in the demographic uh, data of the family, identification data and demographic data, <coughs> uh, they are staying in which part of Delhi? Where are they? They are staying in Kotla, Pilanji. It's uh, oh. also in Pilanji. Uh, what is the use of uh, knowing the detailed uh, address of the family? What is, what is the purpose why I want to know the address of the family? Yeah, because uh, whether they are staying in a rural area or whether they are staying in an urban area, we should know that because uh, the facilities uh, um, provided in the rural area are different from <coughs> what is there in the urban area. Whatever health facilities or any sanitation or uh, housing or... Any other? Any other? Why you want to know the address? Not the locality or something, house number, everything, postal address you want. Yeah, because uh, if there is any problem, if there is any health problem, so that the doctors uh, can, uh, e e any PHCs or some uh, um, PHC doctor can attend the um, family, go to the family and... Uh, Okay. Because uh, uh, in some of the diseases, the doctors are supposed to attend because uh, some of the doctors are um, supposed to attend the um, families and go to their houses to know uh, the details about the um, any details of the disease, whether it is uh, increasing or decreasing. Monitor the uh, disease. Can you name this type of any disease where some actions are taken when the patient uh, doesn't come for follow up? Pulmonary tuberculosis patients, okay. they can uh, mean sometimes uh, they are not so much aware of the disease problem and uh, they are not taking the medicines regularly and uh, uh, if they are not taking the medicines re regularly, resistance can develop. What are the routine investigations that were carried out? I believe she went in the first trimester, routine investigations were done. What yeah. was done? Uh, routinely hemoglobin, um, blood grouping, typing, VDRL, random blood sugar, and um, HIV, hepatitis. What is the purpose of these investigations, broad purpose? Yeah, because uh, if the hemoglobin is less for the anemia purpose, we should know the blood grouping and typing so that if uh, the patient needs any blood transfusion or something like that, and uh, blood should be immediately, blood can be immediately made available so that can be transfused. One of the purposes is, one is to monitor, to advise and to identify high-risk families. High-risk, yeah. So high in case there are anything requiring special care in this particular family. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. How does she know that she is pregnant? Urine pregnancy test. She got, a sim no, because uh, um, uh, the clinical symptoms were also coming to her and uh, after that she, because the family is very much health conscious. Mm. So as she missed the period, she contacted the hospital and she got urine pregnancy done and it was positive. Okay. Okay. During third trimester, Nausea and vomiting subsided, but she started having complaints of generalized weakness. Otherwise, there were no complaints like headache, bleeding PV, leaking PV, reduced fetal movement or dyspnea or burning micturition. She was investigated for generalized weakness and was found to be having low blood according to the patient for which she was advised medicinal treatment and uh, a good balanced diet. She was also advised for in injection tetanus toxoid booster dose to be taken at 36 weeks of pregnancy since she had received the two doses of injection tetanus toxoid during the last pregnancy which happened to be within the three years period of production. She was then again advised to come for next CNC after 15 days. Past history revealed that she suffered from pulmonary tuberculosis three years back for which she was given full treatment for six months by DOTS method of the revised National Tuberculosis Control Program. Otherwise, she had no past history of hypertension, diabetes, <coughs> or jaundice, or any surgery, or blood transfusion, or STDs. On personal history, diet of the whole family in 24 hours in three... Oh, 
did she did she take an, did she take any iron folie for prophylaxis from the whatever she was going for the yeah um, yeah she was uh, uh, no the diet was very low but she was taking iron and folic acid uh, only one tablet so that was not sufficient to make uh, her uh, blood level means hemoglobin level to the up to the mark so she was having side by side she was having anemia also she was given this tablet by the clinic yeah, she was yeah. starting which month iron and folic acid when did she start um she started during the second half of the pregnancy means after uh, during the second trimester okay. you said you know they are taking iron folic acid one tablet uh, although the diagnosis was made anemia yeah uh, <laughs> You will give one tablet or two tablets? No, two tablets is given. So she was taking two or one? No, she was getting only one tablet. Okay. So it was given one or it was given two? It was given one. One tablet. She was getting one tablet. Okay. Then uh, tetanus toxoids, she has uh, received two injections. Yeah, no, because in the previous pregnancy, she already got uh, two injections. Yeah. So this time, uh, the only the booster dose was given, which was given, which was advised, because now at present she is only 32 weeks, so it was advised to get it at 36 weeks of pregnancy. Booster also in the last month. Eh? Yeah, bef um, four weeks before the EDD. Okay. Another thing is that um, she is married three years back. Yeah. She was a known pulmonary tuberculosis three years back. Yes, sir. Hmm? So she got the disease after the marriage? Or she no, was before a... marriage. Huh? She got uh, the disease before marriage and she was treated also before marriage. She got treated also before marriage. What do you recommend after six months of treatment? Any follow-up to be done in uh, tuberculosis? Yeah, follow-up should be done. Uh, for tuberculosis, oh, no. if she is having any symptoms uh, f um, like mild fever or something like that, uh, follow-up should be done for uh, the tuberculosis. Um, any ELISA TB? No, no. Where you say it is uh, relapse or something or resistant? When you level a case as a resistant tuberculosis, when you level as a relapse tuberculosis. When, uh, if the medicines, uh, uh, if the, um, if she is having relapse, after taking the medicines, the disease will be cured and if it's resi resistant, it won't be um, cured. She, she was declared that she is fully treated. Yeah, she was declared that she is fully treated. Okay. So after um, 22 years, she now she is 22, 22 years old. Years. She got married at the age of? 22, uh, no, 19 years. 19 years. Then she had a baby, one and a half year old. One and a half years old. So now in another... And she is second, this is her second pregnancy. So, we'll come later on, you present. <laughs> Diet of the whole family in 24 hours in three consecutive days were calculated and was found to be on an average 2125 kilocalories per consumption unit per day. Therefore, the calories taken by the index case, Mrs. Sarma was on an average 1912.5 kilocalories per day, which shows that she is taking an inadequate diet for the pregnancy. You know, I just want to say here that instead of taking the whole family diet and this, you know, ANC uh, diet should have been taken separately, that would have been much better. We don't know, you know, you already know that if a uh, woman is pregnant, she might not be taking a different <coughs> amount of diet and if you take average, that would be totally different. Yeah, yes, sir. You know? Yes, sir. So individual diet in that case, I think is required. Yeah. So, so, sir, in case of pregnancy, we should take uh, individual, individual diet. Individual diet. Individual okay. diet of the lady. Uh, okay. 
And according to that also, I think in average it's coming very less. Very less, thousand. yeah. Should be, at least for a moderate uh, worker, should be 2500 mm -hmm. for a pregnant lady. Mm -hmm. The consumed food products taken by the um, lady were during the morning time one cup of tea, two pieces of bread, one banana. It's the all calculations. Okay. Giving 605 kilocalories during the morning time, during the lunch time. Two cups of rice, half cup of vegetable curry, half cup of dal, and one cup of milk, which is coming to be 705 kilocalories. And during the night time, with two cups of rice, half cup of veg curry, and one cup of milk, it's coming 605. On drug history, she was not allergic to any drug. On addiction history, she had no history of any addictions like tobacco, pan, alcohol, etc. So in drug history also, if you have said, you know, you have said that uh, the lady is not at allergic Having to any drug. Any, 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 no drug allergies there. But she is already taking some drugs. Yeah. And she uh, requires some more drugs. Yeah. Or any other drug she has taken in the past. Yeah, tuberculosis, uh, anti-tuberculosis yeah. drug she has taken. The most but important is she is already taking drug now. Hmm. Iron folic acid. Any other drug she is taking? No. Okay. On uh, personal hygiene, history regarding personal hygiene revealed that she maintained her hygienic conditions by taking daily baths, brushing her teeth every morning, washing hands with soap after toilet and before eating and trimming her nails as and when required. Sleep history revealed that she had, she was taking an adequate sleep of 68 hours during night time and half to two hours during the afternoon time. On socio-cultural history, she got married at the age of 19 years, husband being 22 years old. No family planning method was accepted since marriage. During her pregnancy period, she was given adequate antenatal care by allowing her to attend the antenatal hospital for regular checkups, but did not receive any social help from other family members. Extra diet was also not received by her during the pregnancy period. You but said, yeah, sorry, yeah, you said yeah. that they are three only. Yeah. So there was no other family member staying with them. Yeah, that's why she couldn't get the um, other family member's uh, yes. help. Any uh, person in the neighborhood who can help the lady? No, um, she didn't give the history. Um, you have asked um, about that? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. better to ask, you know, mm -hmm. any elderly lady or some neighbor mm -hmm. can help uh, this lady. Okay. I think the husband might not be coming with her to get the ANC pick up and all that. Yes, sir. Have you asked about it? Yeah, I asked her, but uh, the husband was uh, coming with her for the ANC, mm -hmm. but uh, no other family member or no other uh, neighborhood yeah. persons were coming okay. for her help. That's good. That's good. Okay. Keep, keep doing it. Extra diet was also not received by her during the pregnancy period. But adequate rest was provided to her during the period of pregnancy. No medication or any exposure to radiation was there during the period. For childbirth, they preferred hospital deliveries than by untrained dyes or personnel. First baby was also delivered in a hospital and no complication was reported during the childbirth or postpartum period. Also, she had no history of any confinement during the postpartum period. After the delivery, baby was immediately put to breastfeed, but during the breastfeeding period, occasional pre-lacteal feeds were given like ghutti and water, showing that the baby was not on exclusive breastfeeding. After six months, weaning of the child was started with semi-solid foods. Katori and spoon were used for the feeding purpose. Along with the weaning foods, breast feeds were also given and was continued till the child's age of 1 year and 4 months. Baby was given all required immunizations timely and regularly till date. You said, you know, uh, while having the breast uh, feeding, she get some 
feed in between uh, like prelectal feeds were given yes. also mm. given mm. why uh, because of their uh, customs means okay. uh, because of their customs have you ask have you ask about this that is it the part of your custom is important to give it or not yeah because sometimes uh, she was not knowing also that should not be given or that okay. and uh, she uh, received uh, these things means somebody told her that should be given okay. so it's better for the child uh -huh. and so she was giving um, good tea and water and all okay this yeah. was the reason yeah very important yeah okay no family planning method was accepted postpartum Personal hygiene was maintained by regular baths and brushing teeth and washing hands with soap after toilet and before eating. Also, she observed parda whenever going out of the house. On environmental history, the family stays in Kotla in Pilanji, New Delhi, which was previously a rural area, but nowadays included as an urban area in New Delhi. Regarding the housing, they are staying in a rented one-room space with no ventilation system in the room. The room was ill-lighted with a single bulb and provided with a single ceiling fan. There was no separate kitchen, toilet or bathroom. The room was a part of a two-storied building having several similar rooms, small rooms for rent purpose only. It had a common toilet and bathroom for all the tenants staying in the building. The corridors of the building were also not properly cleaned. The area surrounding the building was also dirty with accumulation of waste of animals and logging of water because of lack of drainage system in the area. Water supply was provided by boring system but because of the lack of sufficient electricity supply and damaged motors, they were getting water from outside places in buckets and canes, etc. Health seeking behavior on fam Falling sick, they attend private clinics for medical help for mild illnesses but go to Savdajang hospital whenever severely sick. Now the examination of the index patient. patient so one thing, just uh, now we have to, you have finished now the um, family history part. Yeah. yeah, you said about, you know, uh, the environment history and in the environment history lighting one bulb is there. No, is it sufficient lighting or not? No, it was uh, completely poorly lighted. How you you can say it's pure, poorly lighted? Yeah, because uh, um, when it, um, when one can read or write or do minute works um, without any st giving strain to the eyes, um, like threading a needle and okay. a, sitting at the center of the room or at the corners of the room, okay. then we say that it is. Uh, um, Okay. Good lighted. And about ventilation? And about ventilation, the doors and windows should be opposite to each other. That's a cross ventilation. Cross ventilation okay. for cross ventilation, and all and the doors and the windows should um, occupy at least two fifth of the floor space. Okay. Then we call so it. What effect it can have on the uh, pregnant lady? Yeah, good oxygenation. She will, she will be getting good oxygenation, okay. and. Um, for that purpose only. Mm -hmm. And lighting. Good ventilation is needed. And lighting so that uh, if uh, she is re doing the household works, it uh, it means uh, she she can be doing mm -hmm. in a better way. Mm -hmm. for that and purpose. if she has a headache, so it can confuse with what? Yeah, any refractive errors. Any other thing? Hypertension. Yeah, hypertension. Okay. Go yeah. on. Go on. Uh, just a minute. Um, what is your observation about the postnatal care, the natal and the postnatal care the lady has received? Yeah, in uh, during the antenatal period, she was getting uh, good antenatal checkups, but she was not getting the adequate nutrition. What uh, what she should be, um, she should be, and uh, during the postnatal period. She was, uh, means uh, since the contraceptive was uh, not uh, um, accepted by them, means the spacing of the births uh, between the two childs um, was not um, adequate. So that is a problem. That was. Uh, Anything else to you recommend 
a postnatal uh, woman. Uh, is there any need of any contact with the uh, health uh, providers? Yeah, for uh, any reproductive uh, infection, uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases or for any uh, RTIs, reproductive tract infections. In postnatal period. For any hygienic conditions. No, any, any. Is she expected to visit somebody or somebody is expected to visit her? Some health functionaries? Uh, there is no need of any checkup? No, because she was having pulmonary tuberculosis, so, so uh, she needed to get uh, the um, um, tuberculosis follow up then. In normal, suppose, delivery, so the first child was born. Is there a need of any contact with any health functionary in the postnatal period? Yeah, it's needed. What is recommended for that? For what? Why? Even in a normal delivery. Whether she is having um, <coughs> mm -hmm. the bleedings uh, okay. are normal yes. or not normal, whether they, uh, um, her uh, okay. genital um, are uh, getting, um, means uterus is getting contracted nicely, whether she is having any postpartum hemorrhage or. Um, right. mm -hmm. Any other? Can you examine child and mother? For the breastfeeding no? purpose. Yeah. For mm -hmm. the breastfeeding purpose, whether she is giving the ba baby uh, colostrum or whether okay. she did the, uh, give the baby the colostrum or not mm -hmm. for that purpose. And you, and the worker has to advise something else also in postpartum period. So next delivery, next, next pregnancy should not occur up to, you know, for contraceptive advice. Yeah, contraceptive advice. And in amenorrhea, postpartum amenorrhea, the mother can, you know, get a second pregnancy. So that has to be told to to the mother. And up to what time it can be safe to have the conception, the breastfeeding conception. It should be told by the worker that during this period you can get pregnant. So it's better to use contraception, isn't it? Yeah, um, uh, means a contraceptive advice should be Given. taken by the mother mm -hmm. from any health worker. Yeah, at the village level we have, who are the health worker there? Anganwadi worker. Any other worker? Anganwadi worker is not the health worker, uh, but we have... Male, female. Dai, huh? okay. No. Male and female uh, health workers are at the sub-center level yeah. and they should suppose to visit to such lady if possible. Okay. So. Oh, On examination, patient was conscious, cooperative and well oriented to time, place and person. On general examination, her height was 140 centimeters, weight 52 kgs, pulse 80 permanent regular, blood pressure was 120 by 80 millimeters of mercury, temperature 37 degrees centigrade. She had pallor 2 plus and no jaundice, cyanosis, clubbing, fetal edema or varicose veins or legs were seen. Here I want to say that, you know, 2 plus pallor is, you know, no way it is like this. It is either pallor present or not present. We can't create pallor, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think, yes. There was no thyroid enlargement also. Mm -hmm. Oral cavity was examined and found to be clean and hygienic. On breast examination, secondary areola was well developed with no retraction, no lumps were felt. On systemic examination, chest was bilaterally clear on cardiovascular system. Both first and second heart sounds were heard normally with no murmurs. On per abdominal examination, on inspection, abdomen was distended with this triag revidarum all over. No scar mark for any previous surgery was seen. Umbilicus was averted. No hernial sites or any venous pulsations were seen over abdomen. 
on palpation abdomen was soft and relaxed any other positive finding in the clinical examination otherwise you can skip over yeah no sir no not some in particular so the clinical diagnosis becomes gravidia 2 para 1 living 1 and a portion 0 with 8 months of pregnancy with moderate anemia and social diagnosis becomes upper lower class of socio economic status with nuclear family with poor environmental sanitation with an inadequate diet having low calories low protein vitamins and minerals treatment advice was a balanced diet containing adequate calories proteins vitamins and minerals 100 mg of elemental iron was advised twice daily 500 microgram of folic acid was advised daily and 1000 mg of calcium daily and regular ac till delivery and to attend the hospital immediately if there was any bleeding pv pain abdomen leaking pv loss of vital movement headache blurring of vision or any fits in this diagnosis if you could have added that uh, the part spacing was small yeah you know? Yeah. That is quite important for yeah. us. Mm. So we can add the mm, contraceptive. No, no, part is spacing. Part is spacing means is less than two years. Mm-hmm. I agree. It's less than two years. Yeah, it's less than two years. So we should add in in the diagnosis. Okay. And in diagnosis, uh, I think you have not added any interpersonal relationship. any uh, mental status of the woman yeah should be added mm-hmm. and uh, husband's you know uh, smoking history or alcohol history you have not added that part okay. i believe you have not ask <laughs> no, you must ask okay. you know because in pregnancy how uh, husband is smoking within the you know house can affect Yeah, mm, yeah, because um, it will create uh, IUGR okay. for the baby. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a wanted pregnancy or unwanted pregnancy. That is also very important. Mm-hmm. You know, if it is unwanted, definitely it going to affect the baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, in this family. Uh, can you enumerate a few positive or negative socio cultural contributing fa- factors for the health or disease positive socio cultural factor any negative socio cultural factors yeah positive findings were there that uh, the um, family was uh, health conscious uh, so antenatal they were getting regular antenatal checkups done the um, breast feeding was given uh, adequately to the baby and uh, colostrum was given to the baby which mm-hmm. was required and uh, personal hygiene was maintained and um, in the negative findings uh, negative points uh, in the family is that uh, they were not taking inadequate diet they were not giving in uh, the, uh, the baby diet. yeah adequate diet and uh, mm, no contraception, no contraception yeah. was uh, used by them mm-hmm. then uh, sanitary condition was uh, mm, not good mm-hmm. and um, any social problems in the family anything uh, yeah because she was uh, in the uh, antenatal or postnatal period Yes, yeah, she okay. was uh, taking. Uh, um, she was observing Farda system because she is a Muslim by religion. So she was uh, in, uh, having Farda system whenever she was going out. Otherwise, she was uh, not having any taboos or something like that. And after delivery, if any uh, family member come there and help her in daily activities and the care of the baby. 
Yeah, it was not happening with her because uh, she was staying alone in, in a nu nuclear family. She, so nobody was uh, because uh, she had migrated from somewhere else mm. to Delhi. So um, may I not ask from which area she has come? Yeah, I did ask. Okay, that's very important. Yeah. Whether it is from UP or Bihar or some other areas. Okay. So what management you have? at the individual level? Yeah, for prevention at the individual level, uh, she was uh, um, uh, provided with adequate nutrition with iron prophylaxis, personal hygiene, health education and periodic health screening. At the family level, by providing general family education to extend improvement in eating habits, immunization, hygiene during pregnancy and by improvement in the standard of living. At community level, by providing health education regarding reproductive health, antenatal care, safe deliveries, postpartum care, and contraception. Nutritional programs for mothers and female literacy, employment, poverty, elevation of overall improvement, provision, and provision of sanitary environment. Is that the virus pregnancy? No, it was not. Uh, yeah, and because she is anemic patient, it comes in high risk pregnancy. All anemic patients are high risk. Hmm? All anemic pregnant women are high risk. Mm, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. We usually have cut off specific criteria for high risk pregnancies. Okay. And usually we think of uh, hemoglobin less than 8 very often as a high risk. So if it is something like 9, it may still be anemic or 10, but still not. Uh, what does it happen to the patient? It was 145 centimeters. So is it high risk? Uh, no, nice because it was, uh, if it is less than 140 centimeters, right. it then it's high so risk. It's always a good idea to have a checklist of high risk criteria. See whether each of them any of them fall into the category. So case of pregnancy is high risk, what does it do? Does it require any extra effort? Yeah, because uh, if uh, there is a high risk pregnancy, the um, health worker should uh, identify the case immediately and refer the patient to the hospital in the periphery. If mm -hmm. the Why it is required, you know, referral? She can be, you know, educated for uh, signs and symptoms and if they appear, then she can go. Otherwise, uh, every person should not and cannot handle by the hospital or the higher center, isn't it? To some extent, the health worker can manage. Yeah, initial treatment, should be, initial treatment should be given there in the um, periphery, and then uh, if it's not managed, then should be transferred to refer to the mm. hospital. No, in okay, which hospital you will uh, prefer that the lady should go? Any referral hospital. Any referral, like Ames or South Asian. No? Sampajan. <laughs> no, in system in, in India, we have some system. From village, they should go to primary health center. And from primary health center, if it cannot be managed, then it should go to first referral unit? Yeah, first referral okay. unit. So we'll discuss about this more. Mm -hmm. Okay, in this, uh, you say the poor environment, the double story mainly meant for rented purposes. So possibly at her level she may not be able to do outside her house. But in her house suppose she want to have some personal protection against malaria. What should you recommend for her one and a half year baby and the any expected baby? What personal protection you can uh, recommend against malaria in this environment? Personal protection, she can use uh, mosquito nets, she can use... Um, mosquito net, which type of mosquito net? Impregnated bed nets. Huh? Impregnated, yeah. insecticide impregnated bed nets. Yes. Okay. Repellent? Repellent, Okay. Yeah. What Repellent. else? And then um, she can avoid uh, the um, water collection in her uh, um, uh, where she is staying so that there is no water collection so, so that there is no breeding of the mosquitoes or something like that. 
یعنی مسکیٹو یا مسکیٹو گڈ نائٹ سم تھنگ لائک دی ریپیئر گڈ نائٹ اٹ از ناٹ ا کمرشل نیم ا پارولوجیکل نیم از سم تھنگ ایلس کیوں پر فن کیس Okay, I think uh, in case of discussion, there is no end actually. You can pull on for hours together. Uh, what I uh, want you to note, whenever you are getting an antenatal case, uh, just like any other antenatal case you are presenting in a clinical setup, take those parameters also into account. In addition, uh, the field situation, like uh, in this case, for example, we have to highlight uh, how many antenatal visits has been done or how many checkups. Uh, preparation for the delivery, what measure you have taken, because it is already 32 week pregnancy. So we have to train the mother accordingly. Uh, preparation like, uh, for example, if uh, institutional delivery you are planning, all those things have to be taken into care. Uh, similarly, uh, for the uh, other child, the gap, the contraception and other things uh, have already been highlighted. Uh, then uh, what we pointed out uh, that uh, routinely uh, doing ultrasound in the second trimester. It is not a routine thing uh, if you go for the uh, primary uh, health care. Uh, how many ultrasounds are available in periphery? In a city or in a metropolitan city like Delhi, it is fine, you can do it. Uh, but uh, we have to see what is the government guidelines, what is the national norms. We have to highlight those things and whatever deviations. In this case, we can do facilities are available, we can always use it. But we cannot make it as a norm uh, for the national recommendations. From that angle, we have to also uh, see the things. Uh, then uh, other things like uh, we have already highlighted in the previous session that whenever you are making a uh, diagnosis, uh, family diagnosis, you have to take care. I think uh, she has taken care, few things, uh, like breastfeeding practices here. So, however, uh, because in a family presentation, you will not get much time. Like in the previous case, we allowed her to present the whole thing. But in the examination, you may get only five minutes to present. So, you highlight important positive points where you want to elaborate further uh, during the discussion. So, you give those tips that, okay, these are the positive findings or these are the uh, problems which the family is having so that uh, intervention is required. So, um, those things you have to highlight in the family presentation. So, I think uh, I will uh, thank uh, Dr. Suniti uh, for you. making a nice presentation. And I thank all the experts also, uh, Dr. Sanjeev, Dr. Uh, Pradhan and Dr. Uh, Jugal Kishore uh, for moderating the case presentations. We will have another uh, session after this. Uh, we will have a break for 15 minutes. Then we will have few issues uh, to be discussed. I will request the students, they can ask uh, questions they have in mind because this is the last session. Uh, so, uh, we have planned that we may take up few issues like uh, project, uh, how to uh, present a project, those issues or RCH uh, related, program related. Some other issues if you are uh, finding, you can text the questions or you can ask uh, live also, we will uh, try to reply them. Uh, I think uh, we will uh, stop now. Uh, please be with us. We will meet again at 1 o'clock.